It was about August of last year. Typical for me, coming to an end of a long, hot summer, I had this idea. Really, I've always had a dream of traveling through the country on my mule, leading a pack mule. So I took off and drove out in my buggy to see if I could find the trail, and this is what I said. I'd had this idea the other day. I, I read a lot. I mean, I got a lot of books and I read a lot. And I like to read stories about people going on adventures and stuff. And uh, there's a book that I got, it's called 90 Days on Horseback. And uh, these guys were riding from Mexico, trying to get to Canada, they, they didn't make it. Then there was this other book I wrote, or I wrote, that I read, it's called, uh, I forget what it's called, but they were riding the outlaw trail. So I got thinking, you know, riding the trail, we got a, fa a couple famous trails. This is just one of them. This is the Butterfield Trail. The butter It's where the Butterfield Strange Coach came out and went from back east. I'm not sure, but I'll put it right here. All the way to California. And they had these stage stops all the way through here. And I think in New Mexico, they had like, I don't know, six or seven stage stops. And uh, there's a man who wrote the book, uh, Mr. Heckler. Heckler, I think I'm pronouncing that right. I'll put a link to it in the description down below. But he identified all these stage stops and the and the route of the of the Butterfield Trail. And the trail went through here about I think it only went for like three or four years. But then lots of other people used the trail. I mean stage uh, uh, what do you call them? Wagon trains. This was the southern route to California. Now it's the spring, 2023. And I want to try to do this. But before I take off, there's a few places I have to check to see if I can actually get through. So I took off for a two-day adventure into eastern Arizona. Just drove out a hatch, down through Nut, over to Deming. Now I'm on the interstate, uh, I-10, on my way to Lordsburg, and then San Simone. It's a Saturday. It's kind of, let's see, it's 54 degrees and no wind today and it's march so any day in march in southern new mexico and there's no wind that's a holiday you need to celebrate jump up and down go outside do something so i'm doing something okay i made it to san simone arizona which is where i will end my ride but one thing i want to do is I'm gonna have to find a place to park my truck because what I want to do is I want to I want to drive over here and have my wife follow me park my truck somewhere and then go home and and because I want to ride right out of my yard and when I get here I want to have some wheels so I can go and this is kind of hard on me because I'm not used to asking people for anything but I, I, uh, I guess I will. That was easy. Real nice guy. Talked to him for a while. We knew some of the same people. He said, no problem. You can just drop your truck off here when you want. And uh, of course, he looked at me like I was crazy. So we talked about some of the access through the hills and, and different routes and what he knows about it. So that was real beneficial. Sometimes you just gotta go talk. You just or go ask. So that was that was nice. San Simone's right there. That second set of trees right there is where the where I'm gonna be able to park my truck. Real nice man. There's a little dirt road comes up through here. It's not bad, and I could probably keep going with my pickup. But I figured I'd unload my buggy right here. And that's the Pelencios. Right up there. Now I'm not sure where I got a mark on my on my onyx, but that Butterfield Trail comes right through here somewhere. So that's what I gotta go. I'm gonna jump the buggy off the trailer there. And then uh put these dogs in the buggy and drive up through there and see what I can find. And then once I'm done that there, 
Then I'll drive back to San Simone, put the buggy back on, drive back to San Simone, get on the interstate and go around and, and see if I can find a route going through there. It's gonna take me a little while. So this is what I gotta do. Cause I, I could just take off and kind of guess and do like they did back in the old days. And you know, that would probably make it a little more authentic, but I don't wanna make my animals suffer. I wanna make sure I have water and, and I can get to everywhere I need to get to to make it easier on them even if I have to deviate from the route you know I want to stay as true as I can to the trail but if I have to deviate for water then that's just something I have to do I'd like to avoid riding down the side of the highway as much as possible to me that doesn't sound like fun at all but oh well what do you think Shoga? Iris you ready so I unloaded babe and loaded the hounds up and took off the main thing I was looking for is sources of water and although I didn't go to exactly where I thought the trail went, I was close. These are the kind of things I'm looking for right here. Water. So, I, it shows on the map, I think it's all screwed up. I think that Butterfield Trail or the trail comes right through there somewhere. Hey, get over here. At least I think that's where I'm going to come through at, right through there. On the map, it shows it going through there. So I need to find, I'm going to drive up through here and look around, maybe see if I can find a two-track road going up in there. If I can't, I'm going to go back, load the buggy up, I'm going to go to the other side of these mountains, which would be Stein's. That peak right there they call Stein's Peak. That's a beautiful day. Wouldn't it be neat if you found a lion track and those dogs start chowing right up to you? They call these mountains the Pelencios. And there's bighorn sheep in these mountains. Warner Glen comes, has come in here and caught several lions. Walking in the steps of legends. <laughs> this was the only road I could find going up into the hills. It was further north than what the map showed the trail going through. But it showed a couple springs up there. The swastika carved into his forehead. I saw the story we tell ourselves about the end of the 60s. Way down there is San Simone. This is beautiful country in here. Really, really like it. I wonder if when I make the trip, this is going to be the like, this will probably be like the last day or the day before the last day when I top over. And I wonder, wonder if I'm gonna to be too tired to appreciate how pretty the country is or what that feeling is gonna be like when you, when you look and you think, there it is, I made it. <laughs> I'm anxious to find out. Might as well exercise the dogs supposed to be a spring down in the bottom of that canyon. There's supposed to be a couple springs down there. There's water right here too. This is where the little two-track road ends. I don't see if there's any trails leading out of here. There is water, a water tub right up there. That tank's full and there's there's springs down in this bottom. So shows that the Butterfield Trail is that way about four or five miles three or four miles but on the other side it's I mean it's good to know there's water here because within four or five miles you can always make it to there so even if I had to cut across and come across the top and slide down the bottom into here yeah I'm glad I make this trip this is this is beneficial I gotta load these dogs up. All right, let's head back to the truck. Now I gotta head back over the mountain. Go to a place called uh, Steins, Steins. It's a pretty cool place. Got a lot of old buildings and stuff. Drove by it a jillion times over since 
Well, first time I went to Tucson was in 1978. And it's I-10, you know, goes to Tucson. But I've never stopped there. It's one of those places. I've always seen it off the side of the road. It looks really cool, but I've never stopped. This time I'm going to stop. Well, probably a good thing I'd never stopped. <laughs> There's <laughs> really nothing. They don't let you go over there. I thought it was always kind of a tourist thing, but it's all privately owned. They don't let you they don't let you in there. Oh well. Maybe I'll find a newspaper article and I'll put it right here about Steins. like if that train ever gets by here I can go right across the railroad tracks right there I can hit a road kind of goes back to the right and then out there I don't know a few miles I'll hit the Butterfield Trail so I can kind of get an idea what it looks like out there it looks like a pretty good road I might not have to unload the buggy I might be able to do it all in the truck we'll see this train must be five miles long though There's a lot of cattle out here, so there's water. I, I did see a dirt tank back there, and it's marked on the Onyx maps. The problem with dirt tanks is you don't know, oh, here's a good dirt tank right here. The problem with dirt tanks is, I mean, it might be full now, but if you wait too long, it might be dry by the time you get through here. See what I mean? That thing's dry, but it looks like there's a water tank back off over there. There's cows everywhere. So there's gotta be water close by. I think this is it. I think that's the trail. And that's up, up there. I think they call that Doubtful Canyon. Now according to the Onyx map, I'm not quite to the trail, but it could be off a little bit. Lots of wide open nothing out there. This is where the trail goes through. There's a there's a fence line that goes right down through the middle of it, so I don't know. You just decide when you get here which side of the fence you need to be on and just stay on that side. I'm sure there's gates at some point along it just depends on how far you get a ride before you find one that can that can always be a problem when you're tired I'll make a good camping spot right here the Butterfield Trail is just right there and then this there's a little old two-track road goes right up into what they call Doubtful Canyon and I seen just some this this road coming off a little bit <clears throat> and Dun, 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 dun. Got a fire ring. And a pile of firewood. That's just handy as a pocket on a shirt. I know there's water about 10 miles from here. It's 20 something miles across that flat right there to Lordsburg. I, you know, I can do 30 miles, 40 miles without water, easy. So, but this is camp for the night. It's nice.
right hat on now anyway. I got it up. I'll put my bedding in it. It's got side windows. But I don't think I'm going to set those up. I'm going to need to keep the heat in tonight. It's probably going to be a little bit cold. Probably down in the probably high 30s, low 40s. We'll see. I don't think I'm smart enough to use this ladder. <laughs> this is the second time I broke it. I, I just I can't figure out how it's supposed to lock. I get some of them to lock and then others. So I'm going to have to send away and buy a new ladder because I tore this one up. It's like a bull in a china closet sometimes. My dad used to say, it's like a bull in a china closet. What you don't tear up, you sh or poop on, excuse me. Anyway, I got... This is just a big sleeping bag. It's not, it doesn't have that much warmth to it. Let me just, it doesn't have that much warmth to it, but I, but it's real roomy. So I got that. I've got this uh, memory foam pad underneath because this, there is a cushion in here, but it's just not quite enough for this old man. So I got this and then Got my pimp, my pillow, got my pee bottles, which are really important. Cause you don't want to climb down this ladder in the middle of the night. It's no fun. And then I've got, I, I put these two wool blankets in here. They're just old army surplus wool blankets I carry in this Aqua Quest bag. I forgot one thing. Gotta put my pistola up there. Better safe than sorry, huh? So that night I built a fire, I watched the sun go down over the Pell and Seos, threw a ribeye on the grill, made me something warm to drink, then climbed up in the bunk and went to bed. degrees this morning so it's a little cold I I just slept with my light sleeping bag and then I pulled a wool blanket over me I was a little cold but not that cold the cushion that I put in there that memory foam it made it comfortable but uh, yeah I should have I should have I should have used my really warm sleeping bag I got up this morning and Used the old jet boil, made me some coffee. 
I was too cold. I was too cold to turn on a camera. I thought it'd be warmer than this. I didn't think it'd get down to the below freezing last night, but it dang sure did. I'm just gonna sit by the fire and get warm now. Hey Siri, call Tammy Von Mobile on speaker. Calling Von Tammy Mobile on speaker. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Man, that's pretty sunrise. I kept adding wood to the fire, built it up, sat by it, and got warm and thought about the trip. I know it's gonna be close to 180 miles. I've gotta schedule eight days. I figure I can probably do it in seven, but to be safe, I'll schedule eight. And I need eight days of decent weather. I can't have 40 mile an hour winds. Going across those wide open spaces would be miserable in high winds. But I think I can do it. Matter of fact, I know I can do it. I just gotta check out a few more places, a few more spots. Then, onward and upward.